Well, it's... God, is that thing a hawk? Is that a hawk? Sure standing like one. I don't think it's a crow. Hang on just one second. Yes, it was a hawk. Here's a picture. Okay, well, it's it's mail call. Um, it's it's after five. It's after five. Hey, wrist check. Okay, so wrist check. Panda. Um, this it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I built this out of parts, the last of the best parts I had for a panda. Case is polished, but it's not beaten. It has no pitting or anything else like that. Better case would be nice, but gosh, I've seen worse. This is actually, that's an, a genuine NOS crystal. It's Seiko. It's not Sternkreutz or anything else like that. It's the original dial, original hands. Um, the loom on the dial on the hands was bad, so I had to restore those. I think the only thing that's kind of unfortunate, it's got some sunburn on the dial right there. And also there's a whole section here on the upper register where the paint had just sometimes these with time they'll turn brown right the dials they'll patina down other times if water gets in you can have this the surfaces of these sub registers delaminate and they just they just peel off and that's actually what was happening here i did an okay job on this it, i need to actually very carefully polish down this I did an okay job matching the gray, but it's not as smooth as I would like, but it looks, I think I have to say, considering what I was making it with, it looks, it looks pretty respectable. Oh, and the mu movement runs beautifully. Beautiful, beautiful movement. So, you know, another survivor. Anyway, I'm glad to be here, truly. Um, we have the, the largest pardon me, the largest f forest fire in Colorado history, uh, the mandatory evacuation zone is runs right up to about a mile and a quarter, a couple kilometers to the west of us. Um, it is it is crazy. And at a certain point, we were getting, a couple days ago, this week, we, would, we, we were getting ready to bug out uh, because we, there were all these crazy high winds. This fire's been burning for smoldering for a couple of months but then the wind kicked up you know really really pushing like gale force winds and it all of a sudden the fire woke up and it pushed west uh right up to horsetooth reservoir behind us and we were we were getting ready to have to pull out thankfully the winds died down and the fire went south but it's it's crazy i mean you might hear helicopters around um well, here, look at this. I just, I just made this video. So yeah, it's still, it's still going. Um, there's, there's ash all over everything. Um, it's just, you know, it's been so long since it's just, the fires just keep happening. So. Sabrina is here, but it's been a very long day uh, now that we're back in here doing stuff. I haven't been able to get a whole lot of work done, again, because of all the problems. She's here, but she doesn't feel that great, so here we are. Okay. Questions? Um, hang on. Forbidden Colossus. Spencer, what I'm missing is Sabrina's oh-so-choice reaction looks when you're talking. I love having her here. I love being able to bounce off of her. It's, uh, well, not that way, but, well, yes, that way, but it's just, these are so much fun to do. I like doing them with Sabrina because they're just, they're fun to do with her, but. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Perhaps you could insert her still shots with one of the several expressions, the board at what Spencer is saying look. The oh my god, is he really mansplaining this one look. The I wasn't even born then look. The eyes going up to hear what the kids are breaking look. And the outright sneer. Does she sneer? 
And of course, the all-purpose sigh. Her facial expressions could appear in the upper right corner. Of course, editing that in would take time, but dang, it would be a fun counterpoint to the series repair talk. Sabrina contributes far more to the viewing experience. You guys are an inadvertent comedy duo. My two cents and all that. Oh, I agree entirely. These, I mean, <clears throat> um, you know, with, with, she's more than the spice of life. Uh, she and I are a duo, and not having her here is uh, just, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's like bread with no salt, eggs with no dill, an omelet with no cheese. Tom N. Hi, Spencer. Thanks for showing the Rolex Trio. Good stuff. Regarding synthetic lube and running watches dry, does this warning apply to the 7A blank 8 series and other quality quartz analog movements? Well, sure. Uh, absolutely. But the caveat is quartz movements have an unstressed train. Unlike a, a mechanical watch, you have this big, um, you know, mainspring and it's pushing all this power and it's pushing all these gears around. The quartz gears, they just sit there until they're, they're pushed, until the stepper motor goes click, click, and then they'll sort of, they, they turn that, that little bit. So it's not quite as important with them. I mean, like a lot of quartz movements these days are made out of plastic because they just don't wear. Now, something like a 7A, this is for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, aren't quite familiar with it. Seiko made a quartz, they invented the analog quartz chronograph. So that's a chronograph like this, but it's quartz movements. Seiko invented them in the early 80s, uh, and they were the best of the best, the best of the best of the best. Seiko made them with four separate trains, Everything is jeweled. They have 15 jewels. Everything is metal. Um, they're, they're unbelievable quality. I still think, all things considered, they're basically the, the greatest quartz movement ever made. Um, the only thing that would improve them is that if they had a really fine discrimination trimmer. They do have a trimmer, but it's, it's, it's like a two-second intervals one. It's... It's the same one that the... Grand, it's the same kind of trimmer that Grand Seiko uses today. But it's not nearly as nice as a variable trimmer like what, say, a 7549 uses. But, I mean, so yeah, you can run them dry. And they're not really going to wear out. A 7A is so overbuilt, uh, I don't know how you'd ever wear one out. But what you will start seeing when the lubrication starts to go um, is you'll start to see one or more of the registers hanging up especially the main sweep, it'll just, it'll have trouble kicking in uh, because there's a fair amount of resistance in that, in that train. So that's kind of one of the things, when that hand starts to flutter or not be right, the watch needs service. And trust me, when you service those, talk about a difference. C Mint, good to see that silver wave. Yeah, man, isn't that silver wave cool? Talking about my H239, it's really neat. Um, with everything with the fire in the last couple of days and this week, all the trouble this week. Um, I have it packed away. Otherwise, I would show it to you. Uh, Lester loves watches. H239, I think. Yes, the Silver Wave is an H239. I find the analog is the first to go funky. Boy, you are not wrong. Um, I, I've i owned... God, ten of them? Maybe more? Uh, and I think of those 10, two, two had working uh, analog sections. And I, like, I went so far recently with this one uh, to try to get one of those watches to have working analog again, uh, to the point of I actually found a supplier that had brand new coils. Um, dead, totally dead. And I think it's, it's a fault not of the coil, or the stepper motor or the train or anything so much as that, so much as the the circuit. Circuit on those things is um, fiberboard with, uh, with copper on it and stuff. And they just, for some reason, they seem to fall prey to battery leaks. I have no idea why, but it's extremely consistent. Almost every one I've ever seen, major battery leak. Mr. James Duffy of the Sandwich Time Channel. Hey man, I love the stuff that you're posting. I think it's great. I know it sucks that you have to change your diet, but I mean, all the stuff you're... Oh, there goes the neighbor lady with her baby. Um, all the stuff that you're posting is great. Nice, clean sandwiches. 
Thanks for answering my question. It looks like I will have to invest in getting a lot of my collection serviced. Would it be in poor taste to ask a watchmaker for a volume discount where I'd bring in a ton of watches? It never hurts to ask. If it's coached in a respectful way, why not? The problem that I'm aware of is that if you come across a watchmaker who has enough time to take on a huge multi-watch job, there might be a reason for that. Um, I don't take multi-watch jobs because I'm too busy. Every other reputable repair person I know doesn't have time to take on a gigantic series of jobs. Um, there's more work than there's time. So, I mean, if you find somebody who's good, somebody whom you trust, and they are willing to make that time for you, then, then sure, it never hurts to ask. Dabak Shakiba. I hope I got that right. Oh, no, it's Babak Shakiba. Hi, Spencer. I read somewhere that if you leave old Seiko inner bezels in a plastic bag with coconut oil for some time, they will retain, regain their old colors. The guy who wrote the post was claiming that even a completely white 6139-6002 um, yellow bezel will turn yellow again given enough time in the bag. I hope you answer this. Thank you. I've never heard that. Um... That's a very interesting idea, because, um, of course, oils and grease will make things translucent. Like, if I were to put oil on this paper, you'd have, you know, it would, you'd have a little clear section. It's like, you know, grease paper that you, you know, wrap around sandwiches. People don't use that stuff anymore. What decade is it? I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll, uh, when I'm done making this video, I'll go over and I'll get... Uh, I'll get a, a really faded, faded ring. I'll, in fact, I'll do one for black and one for yellow. And I'll put it in a Ziploc bag with some coconut oil. And I'll, we'll see, and I'll get back to you. Rick. Love my SKX. I bought it just before our anniversary trip a few years ago and wore it on our travels. Also, after that, I swapped the movement, which is a pretty major watch surgery for me. Not only does it carry memories from my trip, but it's also a reminder of an accomplishment. Like you said, it's a p perfect, pure tool watch, which is something Seiko just doesn't seem to want to make anymore. They used to be cheap, but since they've stopped making them last year, they're a little more expensive than they're worth. Uh, I get, well, you know, depends who you're asking. Um... I'm glad I got mine when I did. Another modern Seiko classic is the second gen monster, especially the orange dial version. They used to sell for under 300 and now they are blue chips. You know, it's, I just, I just don't know. It's, the, the, the monster is sort of a, is sort of a brutalist design. And uh, it, it, as a result, it has never really, it, it's not really my, 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 my cup of tea. Um, so I haven't really, I don't dislike them. It's just ones I don't really think about. But they are, I, I think I even owned an orange second gen monster. I, I sold it years ago and I think I was given it for free. Uh, and I sold it for not a whole lot. Um, I, I, I don't even think I could name a second gen monster if you put it in front of me. So much to know, so much I don't know. So you say they're blue chips now. I, in the second, like a blue chip investment stock. Hmm. Hang on, I gotta get some lip balm. Okay, that's better. Okay. Saul Brook. Hello, Saul. I, you just started commenting on my stuff on Instagram. I didn't think you were an Instagram guy. So, Spencer, you obviously changed watches after the last wrist check. Not this video, the one last week. What were you, what are you wearing the rest of the vid? I have no idea. Um, regarding 6139-7100 variants, I never thought of the black dial version was black enough to be called a Vader. I always just called it a helmet. Uh, I think you're right, actually. Um, the white dial is the only white dial sports watch I have ever yearned for, and I've always called it a Bobby Deerfield. Who in the heck is Bobby Deerfield? I should have done uh, some research. Saul, I have no idea who Bobby Deerfield is. If you if you want a, uh, ooh, that's an Alsatian. Those are big dogs. Um, if you want a white helmet, I do have that one. It needs to be restored, but I mean, 
I don't know, we can always cook something up if you're interested. Mine's nice. I mean, after service, it would be great. Um, but I know you, you don't like stopwatches. Shredder One. Spencer, I'm normally relaxed with a beer to watch your service videos. This one raised my stress level in a good way. Uh, this is a comment on the last Bellmatic video I did. Boy, that bell was... Man, that was a lot of work. I am determined to make some time and pull some bells out of my project drawers and go through one. So I actually have one. Gawking watches. I like the Japanese swords in the background. I collect Edo period tsubas and modern katanas. I don't know. That Japanese yukiyo-e floating world aesthetic is just, it's always appealed to me. Um, and again, my grandparents had a ton of that stuff because one of my ancestors went with Admiral Perry to Japan in 1850, whenever the heck it was. And so their house was like a teeny tiny museum. Um, and I, so I grew up with all these Asian artifacts and I always thought that they were just beautiful. I don't know. They feel, uh, they just seem sort of wonderful to me. Um, and so I, I just like having them around. This one is, uh, this, this sword, this is the actual blade. And it's, the legend here says that it was made by a smith called uh, Rei Kunimitsu. I don't know if that's true. The blade is, the tang is unsigned, but that's what it says. It says it's Rei Kunimitsu. This, the koshire for it, it's very interesting. It has two, um, it has two different family mon on it. I don't have them stuck in my head right now, but there's, there's one and there's the other. So you, and you see the two mon are combined here on the Manuki. You've got the double brass and then the crossed feathers and the, um, the, the tsuba is all feathers, just like this, more feathers like that. There's the double gold of the one family. There's the crossed feathers of the other. I can't remember the name of the families right now, but... The first, the first family was, uh, they were a, a, a Daimo, D-A-I-Y-M-O, Daimo. They were a feudal lord um, family that um, was in charge of a particular area, castle, prefecture, or something like that, they, in an area. They were in charge of it. And then when, um, when Iyasu Tokugawa unified Japan in 1600s, he was less than satisfied with this family's support of him. And so he actually removed them and he put another family in charge of that same area. And that family is those, those two families match these crests. I don't know that this is related to that, but I can't find any other connection between this family and this family, that's the only one, is that they both, one and then the other, controlled this area, parcel of land area of the country with a central castle. They were both feudal lords, daimos, um, and they, uh, and, and they, they sort of did a do, -si -do. So this has both their crests on it. They don't have any genetic relation that I'm familiar with, but they did run that same area. I don't know that the blade actually is uh, Rai Kunimutsu, but it looks like his style. It has the straight Haman, and it's and it's beautifully, beautifully made. It's it's really it's exquisitely nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful blade. Just art, absolute art, a work of art, a work of craft. Beautiful thing. Anyway, it's a mystery. Uh, the person I bought it from in Japan, uh, they didn't say anything about the two families. They didn't say anything about any of the history. So it's all speculative on my part. It's just with all the research I've been able to do, that's where those two families link up, was at that castle. The, I asked the person in Japan 
if they had any more history or knew anything more about it, or where it came from, nothing. Not a word. So, who knows? Anyway, beautiful objects. Okay. Andrew W. Hey guys, I've got a UFO that's in pretty good condition, apart from a small area of pitting on the case below the dial. Is there anything I can do to treat this to reduce the appearance of it? Would products used for rust and car body work help? Cheers. Well, what do you mean, where specifically? Where on the case? Is it the outside of the case? Is it inside on the ceiling surfaces? Where are you seeing it? And is it pitting from corrosion? Or is it like from mishandling or getting dinked? One of the products I use a lot, that I, I back a lot, is um, Brasso. Um, on a, a little bit of Brasso on a cotton Q-tip, and you can you can get a lot of stuff out. You even just let it sit there, and it'll it'll pull a good amount of rust off. I use it all the time. Got to be sparing with it, but I do use it. Aristides Lycunus. I sure hope I got that name right. Spencer, it is so nice to hear someone praise the SKX. Doesn't everybody praise the SKX? Um, with all the bells and whistles the modern divers get, people tend to underestimate the simplicity of the SKX. I agree 100% with you that this is one watch to choose from the lot of Seiko divers. Oh, sure. Um, I have one as my main everyday watch, and I enjoy every moment I have it on my wrist. It's like having a piece of history with me all the time. Oh, yeah, all the pieces of the SKX that come from different lines. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking at it, I see real elements of the lineage leaning back to the 62 MAS and the 6159, making my eyes the last real skin diver Seiko made, keeping that original DNA. Oh, sure. And the dial, this is one of the things, is that the dial elements are taken from the 7548, which is one of the greatest tool divers ever made. So it was, it was sort of a greatest hits thing that Seiko did, um, and they really hit a home run with it. They, they should have made the... SKX for the rest of time. Julie Hill. Uh, question for next week, Spencer. Okay, here I am. Just picked up a, a weekly auto Orient King Diver. 70th anniversary series reissue of that same watch which debuted in 1965. Great fun, great value, great design. Rock solid and accurate Orient Cal F6922. What do you think? Are you familiar with this model? I don't know what to think. I'm not familiar with it at all. I, I, I just don't know Orient very well. I've seen some original Orients from that time, and they tend to be garish. They they tend to be pretty loud, um, but not. But I don't know. The the palette they choose has always been slightly odd to me. Pinks and bright greens and stuff like that. But Julie, I'll look into it. I'll I'll make a note and I'll look. Tom N. Again. I think you've got two questions in this time. So I've been thinking ahead to servicing my restored vintage Seikos. In a few years' time, they'll need cleaning and lube, but not a full restoration. Will you be doing that too in the new scheme? I imagine this level of service would be quicker than a restoration, and the charge would reflect that. It seems that classically trained watchmakers won't touch old Seikos. Appreciate your thoughts on that. Well, when I say restoration, that is the umbrella under which everything falls. Um, full, I typically think of it as being like a full service and case rebuild with new seals and cleaning the case and make sure everything's nice and clean. There's no, Seiko used to have a thing called a, a light service where you would basically just go in and, you know, you wouldn't even disassemble the entire watch. You'd just go from the outside of the the outside of the stripped movement and, and lube the pivots and things like that. I don't do that. Um, I mean, if you, I, I always think it's always better to just do it right. Um, so maybe restoration is the wrong term to use. Maybe I should just say servicing. I mean, that, this thing, that was a restoration. Boy, that was a lot of work. But, in, you know, in a way, it's all watches get gone through in the same way. You go through them the same way. You make sure everything's correct. You comb out the knots. You make them better. And then, you know, you wear them. Some watches have more complications and issues than others. And it's just kind of what it is. So I guess for me, I don't think of it as, you know, doing a light or a full service or versus a restoration. I look at it as just 
you go through the watch because it's time to go through the watch and you make it clean and you do all the things you need to do. I never really thought of it that differently. Andy Lynn, I just bought a Seiko SARX023 with the 6R15D movement. Do they still have the same issues for the 6, 6R15Cs? Um, do they, uh, to the, can you tell, basically? Do they still have the C-type balance issues? No idea. I don't know. I, I, I have, I have, anecdotally, I have heard some people talk about still having those issues. I have not ever personally seen a D, a D version. I, I actually, I don't even know what the changes are. So if somebody knows, let me know. Um, if they're still using the C-type balance, which has the, you know, instead of having a, the, the hairspring having a fixed stud and the whole thing is screwed to the adjusting arm, that's the early type, the good, reliable type. Later, they went to the two-finger type where you have the, the, the adjuster uh, and everything, and they're just sort of in these, held by these little fingers. And as a result, they can move like this in and out, and they can turn and twist. And that's where I, you get a lot of problems. Um, you know, one little inadvertent hit to, to, to where the stud is, you'll change everything that you can you, you hit it like this and the angles on the hairspring everything changes and I I was farting around with one like a month ago and I like I would touch it like not even enough to really see a difference and the amplitude would drop like a rock it was it was amazing it was crazy last question Jim Kennedy why do you not like AR coating? Um, I don't think it's the AR coating that I don't like so much as they they tend to have this weird bluish cast to them as well. I, I mean, I don't mind AR itself. It doesn't really bother me, but I don't, I see the blue and it's like, why is that there? It's just a personal preference. I just don't care for the blue uh, cast on it. It's not something I'm used to seeing. So whenever I do see it, it kind of stands out to me um, and kind of makes me go, what the heck? Um, the only watch I ever owned where I thought that was actually kind of good looking was, um, I, did the Sin ST104 have that? I'm not sure. I had one watch where it actually looked pretty good. Um, but for the rest of the time, it just, I, I kind of put it in the same place as like, um, sapphire crystals and, you know, aftermarket, uh, handsets that are wrong. Uh, just stuff like that. It, it's just a personal preference. There's no right or wrong answer. That's all the questions. See, not having, uh, Sabrina around, you know, people aren't motivated. So I'm going to have to... You know, I keep hoping every week that she's going to come back, but we'll see. This has been another hard, hard week for her and uh, for not just her personally, as well as everything else that's going on with the kids and with them with the fire. And She's been a good sport for a very long time. I'm sure that she will be again, just not this week. And I'm not going to force the issue. So we get to still talk watches. Anyway, that's about it. Now I have to decide if I'm going to keep this panda or if I'm going to put it on the block. Every time, every single time I've owned one of these, I always end up selling it. I don't know. I mean, this one is, you know, very much mine. I, I built this one using all of my powers. It runs beautifully. You know, it's getting harder and harder to get one that's all original, which this is, except for the loom. But, you know, it's a pretty good looking watch, don't you think? Anyway, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or sell it. We'll find out. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you for sticking with me through this yet another Bachelor edition of Mail Call. Um, hopefully the fires won't kick back up, and hopefully we'll get Sabrina back. And uh, we'll go from there. There is a cat in the room, by the way, but she slept through the whole thing. Okay, folks, thank you so much. Bye.